And welcome to the Desk of Lady Ada, hey. our live electronics show. Hello, <laughs> welcome to my Desk of Lady Ada, where we're doing some fun video tests, and I can also talk about what I'm working on. Tonight it'll be short, because I did not have any time to work on digital signal processing. Instead, I had to, uh, I had to work on testers, but I can talk about the testers I designed, also show off some nice silk screen. So do you want to go to um, CompuCam? Mm-hmm. So, so this is the um, Circuit Playground SAMD WebD that I got uh, PCBs for today. It's, um, it's not that different than the last version. I only made a couple small changes. The most interesting change is that we redid the silk screen. Silk screen's done by Phil B. And you can kind of see it here. There's like iconography. But let's go to um, overhead cam and I can show off the nice silk screen. So, this I gotta like learn how to position okay hold like this so um, yes the silk screen is nice it's got like icons and stuff and all the text and on the back which is what I really like so you can see um, here are here are the SWD and SW clock pins and you got just a little bit of text here to just tell you you know which version it is and then we have this really nice like big silk screen here you can write your name on. Um, so we got that all working nicely. And like it, it, it kind of overlaps these pins, but I think it looks cool. And at the bottom, we have it say Circuit Playground Express in the revision. So this is uh, close to done. I do eventually want to add that uh, PDM microphone I've been working on. But while I'm doing that, I have to kind of continue like testing and checking out, making sure that Circuit Python works on it and um, getting these out to people. We have a lot of beta testers and it's like easy for me to switch out the way microphone works because I'm gonna abstract that away from um, users anyways through the library. So like I can swap that in. So what I worked on today is building a tester um, and the way I build testers as people who've watched the show before now is I use an other mill and it's um, cut from uh, a piece of copper and it has these pogo pins sticking out and then I have these um, these uh, standoffs are actually ground connections but they're also mechanical like they, they make it mechanically strong so um, if I have this circuit playground and like I'm you know designing the test right now so I, I just screw these in um, in long term I have these mounting holes here is where I have a clip so there'll be a clip but the test right now I have um, it's running a self-test, and uh, let's see. Oh, you know, one of these pogos is a little loose. I noticed this earlier. This is one of the things about pogos. Test fail on 18. One second. It's also a little tough to test the circuit playground because of um, there's no there's no good pads for connecting. So 14, yeah, this pogo pin is sticky. Okay, so now it's passing. Maybe, I don't know. I guess just start working on this. Okay, so when it passes the basic connectivity test, you press the left button to turn on the red LEDs, the right button to turn on um, the blue LEDs, and then it will do one last test and it will turn green to let you know that it completed the, uh, the test procedure. So that's kind of like what I've been working on today. So I'm trying to get that durable um, because I want to, I have about like 40 PCBs um, that I want to take through this test. So this will make it easy for us to test them. It's like our first initial beta run. Usually I do a small run of like three to four and then I do a run of 200. In this case, because I have a lot of beta testers, I just did a run of 40 and like we're hand pick and placing them. Like we're pick and placing them, but like we're kind of putting them through the pick and place by hand. And then we're gonna test them and program them by hand. So that's exciting. So that's what I worked on today. And then I've also started working on um, a new feather. So this is the feather uh, NRF. 52, which I've kind of worked on a little bit on the show. Uh, it's got an NRF 52 module here. This is a little Bluetooth module, and it has a USB to serial converter, an SWD port, 
battery and all the feather connections you want. It works with all the feather wings. Um, but what's nice is that it, there's an Arduino core for the NR52 that was actually written by Arduino. So this is compatible. So what I have to do is write that self-test code, much like this has self-test code that like tests all the components. I have to write the self-test. So what I do is I program it with the bootloader through the SWD port using like my JLink or whatever SWD JTAG program where I want to use. And then I catch the serial port and then I, I tell the device to test itself, like test its own pins. And then um, usually I have a Raspberry Pi run the test and it will actually do the Bluetooth connectivity as well because the Pi 3 has Bluetooth built in. So it's very nice, it's very compact. You can kind of do the whole test all at once. Um, you program it and then tell it self-test all the pins and then turn on the Bluetooth and then I listen for the Bluetooth on the Pi and if I can hear the Bluetooth at a reasonable, like I look for um, an advertising packet and if I get the advertising packet and it's the right strength, uh, it passes. So that's how we've uh, done all the other feathers. What's nice about this is it's, there's no Arduino chip. It's kind of all in one. So it's kind of a lower cost because you don't have to have two microcontrollers. You just need a USB to serial converter. And that's what I'm working on. Okay. Compact. When you do the test um, for the tester, does it do a power load test? Um, it doesn't do a power load test, but it does do a voltage. It checks the power supply voltage. If there was a short, you know, you would know. Like there's never like, oh, it's just drawing more than usual. Like none of our stuff is really low power. Um, on the boost converters and, and you know, bucks and, and uh, regulators, I do a, a power efficiency test to make sure that I've got the right inductors and stuff. Because um, if the inductor's cracked, it can affect the efficiency. But for these, I just check that the regulator is 3.3 volts. Okay. And can you put the circuit playground um, flat on the table, one up and one down, so folks can see the board? Yeah. Yep, like that. And okay, then this one. Yeah. And then the back of the other one. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the that's the two. Yeah. So one of the cool things is you can um, write your name this board belongs to. Yeah. So when we're sending out our protos to some of our remote team members and some of uh, Adafruit friends and family, um, you can just write the name on the back of the board when you hand it to me before it goes to shipping. Yeah. That, that'll make it easier. It's kind of fun, too. Because I like, I like the idea that there's a space on the back to, to write your name. That's an yeah. um, idea by Pelly, who, who is working with us on some Circuit Playground stuff. And he's like, hey, you know, wouldn't it be really cool? I'm like, you're right. That would be really cool. Like, there's all this space. Why not? Yeah. So he totally took um, that advice and, and added it. Okay. So I'm just, I'm just like hard at work hacking away at this stuff. So no, no exciting DSP today. No, we're just chilling. Well, I'm not quite chilling, but I'm not working on DSP. Yeah. But I'm reading that DSP guidebook, which is awesome. So check yeah. it out. It's at dspguide.com. Yeah. There's no Kindle book. Um, you can go there and I guess like click on the ads once in a while. And then um, you can buy the book on Amazon. But I don't have any space for books, so I'm just reading it online. But it's an excellent, excellent book. I might ask for us to stock it. Like I think it would be a good book for us to stock. Oh, one more question about the circuit playground. Is it the same diameter as the previous one? It's the same diameter, and the components are almost completely in the same location. Not exactly. I had to move around a couple parts. But all the pads are in the same location, and the connectors are in the same location. The buttons are almost identical in the same location. Um, the switch is pretty much in the same location, I just, and the, the reset button is a little bit moved. I had to make space for this um, SPI flash chip up here. So things got shifted down a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. But all the pins on the outside are the same. The pads are the same location, and um, they're actually pin compatible. So if you used code, you're like, oh, digital six, it's in the same location. Like digital six and digital nine and digital 10 and all those pins, I made them so they're all um, pin compatible with the previous version. The internal pins are different, but you don't usually talk to those directly anyways. You're gonna go through the library. Okay. So well, that's it for tonight. Hopefully get back to that PDM stuff, and we'll, um, we'll wrap up that microphone, and then we'll update this for Rev-E to have the mic, and then we're going to add a special extra thing. Yes. Stay tuned for the next exciting chapter of Live Electronics Lady Ada. Yeah. Okay. Support Adafruit by buying 
something on Adafruit.com. Like and subscribe. It makes you feel good. I'm gonna grab it. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna get back to this testing. I'm almost done. And we'll work on this NRF52. What's funny is, of course, as I designed the tester, I always find like all the weird bugs. It's kind of a side effect of designing a tester is it's also an excellent way of like, you hit everything, you know, so. Okay. All right, that's it. Bye. Cheers.